So hi everyone, I hope you're really going to enjoy this video. Just had a real treat here at Woburn Golf Club with Woburn Touring Pro, Ian Poulter and Ryder Cup legend. And we got into so much detail about what it takes to develop a really good short game. We got into the chip and run shot, the softer landing shots. We got into pitching, bunker play. We got into real detail about what club to use where, how the bounce really changes what shots you should play and really got inside Ian's head as to how he pictures shots in terms of flight and in terms of spin. So we also got in some really good chats about uh, Medina as well and that, that sort of special Saturday afternoon where he turned that match around. So some good insights there as well. So really hope you enjoy it and hopefully it's going to improve your game. Right, I'm delighted to be here at Woburn Golf Club on the fantastic Tavistock short game here today and I've got a very special guest. We've got the one and only Ian Poulter. Great to have you along, Poulter. Stan, awesome to be here. And uh, we're going to chat all things short game today. Yeah. We're going to go through all the key shots we need when we miss green, whether it's in a you know, simple little chip and run off a fringe lie and also those runoff areas, pitching that awkward distance, 30 to 60 yards, which a lot of golfers struggle with, and also some bunker playing. You know, you don't need much introduction. Obviously, you're, you've played at the very, very, very highest level under immense pressure. You know, world championship wins and Ryder Cup hero and, you know, so many, so many highlights in your career. And uh, it'd be fantastic to get under, you know, some of the secrets that you've, you've got in your short game. Because I've always admired your short game. You know, fantastic, you know, touch around the greens. And I think it'll be good to get some insights from you. Cool. Thank you. I, I mean, you know, for me, this end of the bag is the fun end. Mm. You know, all of this stuff is relatively boring yeah because for the most part you're playing stock numbers you know it's flat you out know, on, it's on either number. you know 178 seven yeah. iron yeah there's not much you need to do with it uh -huh. if you're adding two or three or four yards in between mm -hmm. it's either a tiny draw or a cut but you know when it comes down to this section here which to be honest covers a much greater distance mm -hmm. you know when you think a wedge for me is just over 140 yards mm -hmm. all the way down to chip in, putt in, bunker play, mm -hmm. you know, you've got 140 yards worth of equipment yeah. right there, mm -hmm. you know, and then you really only use with two clubs at this end. And pretty much the same ball flight every time. I mean, I know yeah. sometimes you'll knock it down a bit, but the amount of creativity and different flights you need here within that 140, 140 yards, like you say, yeah. is, is just vast, isn't it? Yeah. And what I really like about it is the fact that you actually carry, you, you go 52, 56, 60, and you have a 46 as well. And we were just saying off camera how uh, I'm a fan, we're both a fan of actually getting wedges that are going to help you around the green a little yep. bit more, not about always about getting perfect gapping, yep. which seems to be a trend these days. A lot of 50, 54, 58s, which works really well for loads of golfers, of course, yep. but you know, you've, always, you've always stuck with this configuration, yeah? Well, it, for me, it works off the 60. Mm -hmm. So I've always, I've always tried and liked the ability of, of, of how I use a 60. I've used various different bounces through all of my time, you know, working with Voki and working with, you know, A grind, K grinds, T grinds mm -hmm. to find out what one I, I like. I generally carry two different lob wedges to every week. So this is depending on the ground conditions? That ground conditions, conditions depth, yeah. depth of the sand, yeah, yeah, sure. um, the type of grass around the green. Um, you know, so this generally, one, just for people, so generally it's softer and there's more sand, you'd use a little bit more bounce on the A little bit more bounce on it, slightly and, and bigger maybe flange. Sole, yeah. yeah. And then obviously moving, you know, that, that has four degrees of bounce. Mm -hmm. I've always kept my lob wedge down to a small bounce. Mm -hmm. I like it to sit tight. So I generally open the face a lot. Yeah. So again, four degrees, as soon as you start opening that face, Four turns to five to yeah, six to seven sure. very, so very, very quickly. you less than as bounce as possible, and then it gives you margins for opening. Correct. Opposite with a 56. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do I feel the need to open a 56 mm -hmm. unless I'm in sand, which I think is quite fluffy. Yeah. Quite I need a bit more bounce. A bit more depth where I can then yeah. still open it, mm -hmm. have huge amount of bounce, but therefore then that distance depends on how I want to use that. But around the greens, play it fairly straight faced. Mm -hmm. Obviously you want the strike to be nice and crisp, want the flight to come out with not much cut spin. Mm -hmm. So play it relatively straight. So you got 14 on there. 14 the yeah. on the 56. This is a four. Uh, 12 degrees on the 52. Mm -hmm. So obviously four degrees of difference between those three. Again, I still quite like quite a bit of bounce on the 52. Mm -hmm. 
It's just something about my attack angle, mm -hmm. divot pattern, what I've got used to through all the years. And then I decrease again a little bit once I get down to the pitching yeah. wedge, which is 46 degrees. I think that's fascinating as well. I think people can learn from that because I think so many people just go into a pro shop and just buy a set of wedges and they don't really consider the bounce angle, you know, or the different 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 grinds available on wedges. Yep. And, uh, and for you, it's absolutely key. It just gives you so much more versatility. And the other I thing I think which, um, you know, is, is, is quite interesting as well, is the shaft change. Mm. So, you know, through all my irons, I use a 7.0 Project XLZ, mm -hmm. which goes all the way to wedge. Mm -hmm. That's a club that, you know, I'm, I'm happy hitting flat out yeah. at times. And then with this stuff, again, because we cover 140 yards and yeah. down, probably very rarely would I be hitting any of these flat out mm -hmm. because I want to control the spin, mm -hmm. uh, the flight, what it is and where I want to land it on the green. So I go down to a 6.0. Yeah, which is softer, right? Softer. Mm. So therefore gives you a bit more feel because you're not yeah. going at it quite yeah. as hard. And then again, when I drop down into the 56 and lob wedge, I drop it into a completely different shaft, an S400. Mm -hmm. Weight, feel. And that's for more around the green. It just gives you a lot more touch, yeah? A little bit more touch. Yeah. So again, it's hard for, it's hard for a guy who now listens to this and goes, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to yeah. buy. But I think, I think the thing, you know, there's enough pros in the pro shop yeah, nowadays. Exactly. But to... I, in general, I would definitely go lower bounce in your lob wedge. I yep. go up, up into the bit more bounce in the sand wedge and then come back down to the gap wedge. And I yep. think if people just follow that sort of pyramid idea, yep. I think that would be the simple way of doing it. If they want to get more into the shaft flex idea, I think that that would be, be useful for them. Yep. But I think if they just got the right loft and bounce configuration, I think that would be absolutely huge. How many flat out wedges would you hit, you think, in a season? Like, or, or in a tournament might be better. In a tournament, like, like flat out, you know, where you're worried about it, it's going to screw a lot. I mean, is it a front pin? You might try and suck it back to a front pin or? Depends on what, depends on what the course is. This week, that's the week we're going to, going to be going into Valderrama. Mm -hmm. Soup, generally, soft greens, Yeah. super fast. Uh -huh. Green sloping back to front. Yeah, so you're trying to just eliminate spin pretty I much as much. Literally, yeah. when I get to a flat out pitching wedge distance, I'll be chipping nine iron all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing. It's, it's a positional golf course. It's a course you want to st stay under the hole to mm -hmm. give yourself an uphill putt, mm -hmm. but you are controlling every shot into the mm -hmm. green for that reason. Because as soon as it starts spinning on those greens that are running 13 on the oh, spin, that, that can come back. It's coming back 30, 30 feet. And then it can hit a runoff area. 30 it could feet, be another... and you know what the fringes are like at, yeah, you know, it's gone. Ten, I mean, it's 60 yards short of the yeah, green. Sure. I think that's a big lesson amateurs could learn from, is that? I mean, I think when I play with them, they hit flat out wedges far too often. Yep. It's very hard to control strike and flight when they do that. And if they learn to go down the grip a little bit and just like a three quarter shoulder to shoulder swing, it's just a much better way to pitch. So I think that's fascinating going 52, 56, 60, a bit of uh, versatility in the bounce. And you know, you've got a little bit of a gap there. You've got a sort of a six degree gap there between the 46 and 52, but you're very good at sort of just making that taking 52 your, or 50, 46 and changing it with, with length of swing and speed. Taking to, yards off. Cause yeah. again, generally nine iron depicts the rest of the lofts from nine all the way up to four. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty much a set yeah. a set standard loft, yeah. and then that's where the gap is. Yeah. But in terms, as you say, like you know, I'm very comfortable taking ten yards off a wedge yeah. to take that all the way back down to 130. Yeah. You know, so you it's again versatility, yeah. control the spin. Okay. Well, let's test it now. Let's get you in some shots, shall we? So we're going to start with a really kind of basic, like bread and butter chip and run, just from a basic fringe lie. Uh, we'll just go for this front pin here, so we're about 15 yards away. Do you, are you a player who likes to just change the loft totally on the situation, or are you one of these guys that likes to stick to the same loft pretty much throughout? Um, I've, I've been a mixture of both, and it all depends on, so it depends on the speed of the green, where I want to land it. So from a visual perspective, I want to land this ball very much on the flattest point. If you go back to Seve, mm -hmm. Seve would always try and land yeah, it pretty much. much reliable first bounce. That first bounce, because yeah. that predicts what the ball's gonna do for the remainder of its journey. Yeah. Um, so again, I'll assess the lie. That's probably first the thing key you look thing, at the lie. lie. Yeah. You haven't look, made any decisions it, until you've studied a lie. How's it sitting? Yeah. Sits perfect, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're here, these greens aren't 
tournament tune mm -hmm. speed, 13. Mm -hmm. I'd probably run in 10. Yeah, yeah. So you can be a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. with this because it's obviously going to slow up. So, you know, initially I go probably for my most, you know, bounce club in the bag, 56. So you've, you've assessed the line. You've looked where you want to land the ball. Yep. And then you choose a loft. And I will always, so if I'm, if I'm assessing the shot, I don't just, I don't just assess it from here. You'll have a look around. You go I'll to the low side. What, yeah, yeah. I'll do the full loop yeah. around. I'll yeah. really try and pinpoint an area of where I want to land it. Yeah. And that's the only thing, that's the only thing that I can control yeah. is what I've got to do with the club to put it on that dot. And are you, how, how heavily are you visualizing it? Are you seeing it landing? Are you seeing the first bounce, the second bounce? Are you seeing it break? Are you seeing it go in? Now, so how I, much detail so, do you go okay, into? Okay, so, so I, I, I will always paint the curve. So even when I putt, so I yeah. this chip shot to me is a putt. Mm -hmm. so, so after it's bouncing, it's basically the, what's the break from there? What's the, what's the break from, from the point it lands? Yeah. And how much again? So how much check am I going to put on it with a 56? Mm -hmm. You know, if all of a sudden I de loft to a 52, it's more check, it's going to obviously it's going to have less check. Yeah. So it's going to release out more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can, you know, I'm going to have to allow for it for a little bit more curve. So, yeah. you know, assessing, assessing the visual point. I'll play one first and then mm -hmm. we can talk about it. Good, love the shot and just breaking towards it. Yeah. And you must hate missing it low, right? Uh, yeah, it would drive you mad, right? <laughs> it would absolutely drive you mad. But, you know, that to me is a very simple shot. Mm -hmm. That feels simple. It's, it's simple from a visualization, visualization standpoint. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of mechanics, yeah. movement mechanics. That I, th I think the big lesson, if you just stay there and get into setup, I think where people can learn from here is just how narrow the stance is. And I mean, there's nothing like long game. I mean, when I, see, when I see a lot of uh, amateurs around the green, it looks like they're setting up for a, as if they could hit that ball 100 yards and they're trying to hit sort of a 10 yard shot. Yeah. Whereas you look like you're setting up for a short game shot, yep. you know, especially short game shot. And I think that's just a huge lesson there. Yeah. Um, and you've got the ball sort of pretty much just on that right heel for a, try and just get that a little, a little bit further back than that, just for a low flighted shot. Yeah. But you've not, you're not putting a ton of shaft lean in there, are you? You've got a little bit in there. But yeah, I just, don't, I don't You don't, don't overdo have... that, which, which can you know, get a bit diggy at times and a bit, it could, it, especially in some of the grasses, you know, you some, might play in, in the States. And... Some people can get a bit, mm. a bit on that it's tempting, side. It? Like just to try and get the club on the ball, it's tempting well, they, to try and get a contact. They want to hit that ball first, right? Yeah. They want to get the crisp contact. Yeah. But again, you know, even with 14 degrees of bounce, I still want that bounce to work. Yeah. I don't want to take a divot of this yeah. from, from, from this distance. I really feel that the club should literally just brush the grass. Yeah. I mean, so you actually hit that slightly behind it, but it didn't cost you any issue in strike. No, because I think the 14 degrees of bounce will always yeah. help you. Yeah, exactly. So it's quite interesting. I mean, you're a super talented golfer, but you've got, you get the, the average amateurs who've got arguably less talented talent than you have got clubs that really are probably hard to use. Like you've got yeah. a big margin for error there. I big margin for error. I don't think you can get much more bounce than 14. No, that's pretty much as much as it gets, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. like, people ask myself, oh, why have you got 14 degrees of bounce? Yeah. Well, I'm not perfect. Yeah. My strike's never yeah. always perfect. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. So, so when, when everyone's watching you play on TV and they see you chip about, like, three <laughs> feet like that, right? You know, you, you that last one probably wasn't absolutely pure, as that one wasn't pure. Right, so watch but that, look, right? Look. But watch that. Yeah, exactly. So that, but you're that, up and down. I haven't chunked it, but you hit that but it wasn't, behind. It wasn't crisp. But so it's, look at it's it. It's foot. Exactly. It's it's absolutely fine. You're getting up and down. So if you do that with a four degrees bounce or six degrees bounce, you could be chipping again. You're having another go, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. That buttery grip is pointing at the left tip in the follow through, as I would call a release one. That's very good. Would you call it what? Release, release one. one. Yeah. A but the grip is... there. So, but, but, so this release system is just a way in which I thought um, golfers can understand short game a bit more. Yeah. Because golfers, to me, they either under release, as you just sort of said, sometimes yeah. that you can dig this way, and then they can flip a bit too. Over release. Yeah. Yeah. So the release of the club is how it moves through the turf, and really, what you did there is what I call a perfect release one. So into the follow through, you got the butter grip pointing at the hip yeah. there. So that would be 
down, that would make it dig a little bit more, that would flip. Yeah. But a shot we'll do later, we'll want, maybe we want a little bit more release. We'll have a look yeah. at that, where yeah. it will go. Yeah. So it gives you that sort of follow through uh, reference point. Yeah, good. Now, if you were going out to the pin on the left there, so it's another sort of 10 yards. Pin on left. Would you, would you loft one. down? Would you? Yeah, I, I, again, I would, and to throw, to throw another crazy one in the mix, we got no grain here, uh -huh. right? So, again, the type of surface, yeah. am I going on Bermuda greens? Are you going into the grain on that first bounce mm -hmm. or are you going down grain on that mm. first bounce? So what so, will that do to the first bounce? So when it, so when it comes into the grain, that right, first bounce the grain, is it's, stalling. It's going to pop Pops, up. Yeah. So depending on the loft and the spin that you're striking it with, yeah. will really depict that first, yeah. is it going to hop up? Uh -huh. Down grain, is it going to skid? Yeah, okay. And how much is that skid? So you're trying to soften it more down grain. Soften it, allow, you know, again, depending on the lie, yeah. And how aggressive you are yeah yeah you know and it all comes back to the lie when talk about the grain it's basically which way the grass is growing right yep. so does so the if, grain is the grain pulling this way yeah and i mean you, you know you can get you can get on some courses where we get a little bit of grain if if the mower's cut down yeah you're going to get just a little bit of grass leaning at yeah. you yeah when the club's coming into that grass yeah or has it been cut the other way? Okay, so so I think the one down grain for me is a little bit easier because everything's Much moving easier. towards it. Yep. You've got to watch it doesn't jump on you. Yep. But when it's into, this is the one that a lot of golfers really struggle with, <laughs> right? So how, how do you go about managing that in terms of bounce and loft choice and maybe a bit about release the club? Would, what would you, what would go through yeah, your mind? So, so again, I, with all the different bounces that I have, I'll assess light how much grain sits towards me, mm -hmm. how moist the ground is. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will stand over the shot itself. I'll take a couple of practice strokes. And as, I, as, the, as the club's touching the ground, I can feel the resistance mm -hmm. against the club. Yeah. So the same way as you would do in a bunker, mm -hmm. where you get in there and you feel with your feet. Feel with your feet, yeah. So you're, okay. the practice swing's key. Practice swing is, is massive. Okay, what's, what? So if you were feeling it quite sticky, felt really sticky, yep. what would that make you think about maybe letting the club release more to put more yeah, bounce so, into so, it? So, so if anything, I could open the face slightly, mm -hmm. which is going to give you more bounce. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to towing it in, taking yeah. the bounce off. Which you could do down grain. You could do that if down you, grain. If you wanted to, if, it was, if you were up a tier or something the other end, yeah. So it, it's like, what's going to give me the best chance to hit the best shot, yeah, but limit the mistake. Yeah, so so I remember speaking to you years ago, and you know, maybe you're talking about. I don't. You said to me, um, I don't select the wedge on the loft. I select it more on the bounce, and that's yeah. just a perfect example, isn't it? So the, yeah. so the loft, it's it's a factor, but it's the actual bounce angle which will dictate what club you're going to use depending on the lie and where the pin is. Yeah. So the same visualization skills used with this shot to that pin, mm -hmm. exactly the same on any chip chuck shot that I feel like I play because I really want to pinpoint where I want to land it. Um, how much reaction I'm going to get off of the strike with the way the ball's sitting with the lie mm -hmm. and obviously the grain that you're mm -hmm. going to be chipping from. Mm -hmm. So again, so you've got a 52 there and we 52. don't love the grain so much, but we've got a little bit more green to work with. I'm going to play it almost the same as yeah. the first shot we yeah. played, but all I've done is I've decreased the loft by four degrees. Yeah. It's going to come out a bit mm -hmm. further, a bit mm -hmm. lower, mm -hmm. have a, li a little bit more roll on it. So same principles apply. Soft in the fingers, soft in the hands. It just lands, it just wants to run out an awful lot more. You can see it just runs out of that pin high. Distance is good. Predicted yeah. the, uh, yeah. Yeah. probably a little bit more, on the break, a little bit more same. break. But that's a good lesson there as well. So your speed of swing there didn't look too much different for this front pin, yep. but the ball speed really jumped out there. Yep. Okay, and that's a good lesson for amateurs as well, is you can keep the same setup, the same swing, pretty much the same speed. You can change the loft in your hand and look how it changes the ball speed. Basically yep. the smash factor jumps off the face much quicker. Yep. And that's a much easier way of getting distance control. So if you're running out to the back of the green, you might go down to a, to a wedge or, or a nine iron even. 
a little bit of check and then it runs out. Good. How much would you practice a short game versus a long game? I mean, that's a question I get a lot. Like, what's the, is there a, is there, everyone's different. That's the big thing. Everyone, everyone is different. But for you, what percentage would you put, say, putting, short game, and, and, and long Not game? as much as you would think it would be. Because mm. I feel very comfortable. I feel very comfortable at this end. Yeah. Um, but does that change in different periods of your career? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, I've worked throughout my whole career at different times really hard on my short game Yeah. to find out what bounce, what loft, yeah. what shaft, texture, and, and I've played for a long time, hence the like, tons of the grey hairs, right? But like, you know, understanding, you know, the texture of the sand, mm -hmm. the weight of the sand, mm -hmm. linked sand mm -hmm. compared to a crushed marble sand, yeah, yeah, yeah. to play in you know all different bunkers all across, yeah. all across the world from the Australian, the most incredible yeah, bunkers yeah, yeah. on sand the planet. Horses, uh, yeah. the sand belt. What the about best. the Augusta sand though, which is very different, isn't it's it? It's absolutely it, horrible. It's not actually a sand, is it? It's actually it's like marble. It's yeah. crushed marble. It's horrible. Yeah. How does it play? I mean, is it is sort of. Is it play it looks light? Like, it looks like it's extremely light, but it's a lot heavy, of it. Super heavy because they water it every morning. Okay. So Is I've it played all spin it. Yeah, you can't spin it. Yeah. You can't spin it and every year so every year they drag all the sand out and they've got a um, it looks like a honeycomb black mesh. Okay. That yeah. that lays throughout the whole bunker. Right. So when they put the sand in uh -huh. Very rarely will you ever have a ball plug at Augusta yeah, National. Okay. It's happened very, yeah. very rarely. But sometimes when you pitch it in the face, say on seven, mm -hmm. that right, one short right, the yeah. one, the one up, you know, it, it's up the hill. It's a tiny green so there. Two bunkers yeah. sit at you like this, and it's an elevated yeah. five yards uphill second shot. Yeah. Often you pitch it, and you can see the ball sort of bounce a bit backwards, okay. rolls all the way down. Now you've got when you're in that trap and you stand there. Yeah. You can't see yeah. three quarters of the pin, yeah. or nearly all of the yeah. pin. And you've got Just a lie, you don't really can spin much. We can't spin it. Yeah. You've got lob wedge. You know the second it gets on that green, yeah. it's running. Yeah. <laughs> and so it can it's take like, a break and go. So you're, you know, you're really trying to land it this far out the top of the trap yeah. with a, a lip, yeah. you know, eight so feet you, above okay, you. So in, so in that case, with that amount of sand then, are you using 60 or using 56? No, I'm almost... I've played there with 64 degrees of love. Have you really? Okay. With what bounce? Not much bounce. But you open it up a little bit more? A little bit. Yeah. So you just got tons and tons and yeah. tons of loft. But that's been to my detriment because uh -huh. one year I played Augusta with tons of loft on a lob wedge and played great. Yeah. Okay. And then I carried that loft because mentally I was like... I had a good year without, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's just, oh, we had a great week. Yeah. Hit so many amazing bunker shots yeah. and then used it too long into the season. Okay. And then I ruined myself yeah. because I've now got a massive gap. Yeah. So I ended up going back to a 60 and then... And also, I think, I think your technique will develop around the loss you use as well. I mean, you know, if you're using a 64 a lot, you might start eventually getting a little bit strong with it because you've got such a weak loft to start with, you know? But it might suit you for that one week. I mean, there's, there's not many players, there's not many players in the world that I've seen that's been unbelievably good with a 64. Yeah. I can think of one. Yeah. Phil. Phil yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. But but he's he's on his own. When when we're talking yeah. short game, yeah. I played with him two weeks ago, um, and his his bunker play with a lob wedge is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it looks like he's going to hold it every time. Yeah, wow. and it will brush yeah. the right or left yeah. edge. Yeah, I mean it's just dead every time. It, it's so. Would you say he's remarkable. the best of your generation? by far over a long period of time yeah. that I've had multiple rounds with mm -hmm. over a 25 year, yeah. 25 year period. I mean, he, you know, he is someone that you, you can learn a lot from, mm -hmm. but he does it his way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's different. It's very hard. It's very hard for someone to go, I'm going to get a 64 and I'm going to learn how to release the bounce the way he releases mm -hmm. bounce. I'm not it's, sure whether the average amateur should go down that route. I'm not sure. I wouldn't. I think he's he's seriously talented. I mean, unbelievably talented. But I'm not sure it's the safest way of 
playing the it's short not game. Safest. I've been there. I've watched it. I've tried it. I've, I've seen him on a short game area like this. And I've seen him hit shots. And it's a 30-yard shot yeah. off of a reasonably tight lie. And I've seen it pitching past the pin and sucking it back five feet. Like and I've waited to him to yeah. go. I've waited for him to go. <laughs> yeah. And I'm then like, you go. I'm like, you have to believe that. I'm like, F me, that's impressive. Yeah. So I've gone in there myself, and you just, you just can't do it. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's, he is unbelievably talented, yeah. and has incredible hands. Yeah, amazing hands. And what yeah. about Cam Smith then? Would he be someone you'd, you'd look at? As, yeah, he's, as... he's again, Cam's very different. There's, there's several players that I would put in a bracket of fun, short game people to watch. Mm. Cam Smith's one. Jason Day's one. Mm. He's got lovely action in yeah, his trap. Yeah, yeah. He uses a lot of width. Yeah, very wide, yeah. Um, Brett Rumford. Yeah. Probably probably one of the nicest actions in a mm. trap. He, he, he really kind of releases it more this way, doesn't he? Yeah. He's in, yeah. got an incredible release. Yeah. Um, who else got lovely short? I mean, there's so many, but like, there are a few little key ones. That you, you say go... they've just got a little bit more flair. Yeah. They can just play some shots. You go, wow, that was seriously impressive, and just it just sort of they can just see a little bit more magic there in some of them. Cam built up, you know, coming from Australia, sandbelt, that type of firm turf. Firm, don't need to take too much sand. Yeah. Can really open the face and nip it, yeah. and really use the spin. Yeah. That, that's lovely to watch. Yeah. Um, you know, Jason Day, mm. great to watch from a like a from a technique perspective, because mm -hmm. he's very very wide and very, very rotates lovely through. Technically it, clean. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, old videotapes of Seve. Yeah. I just you see I've Seve played with him. Yeah, I've yeah. played with him yeah. several times. Yeah. Um, and I played with him in his last Open Championship. At Hoy Lake, yeah, and yeah, I was dressed up. Uh, I was I dressed think, up I like a clown, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's quite funny because he'd been off for a couple of years, bad back, and he plays and um, he put himself in in sevy places. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing for me was as I was going around, I was saying to my caddy, "Well, he screwed there." Mm. Well, I mean, Sevy's good, yeah. but yeah, this will be interesting if he gets this up and down. It wasn't. It wasn't a case of getting up and down. Yeah. It was a case of it was a gimme. Yeah, amazing. I could chip it. It's like the uh, '95 Ryder Cup, you know, when he was playing against Layman, and he went out first, and he was in it all over the place. He was on different fairways. He'd be like going over the trees, and, and then, then he'd hold it for birdie. I think and... he chipped in twice in yeah. that first ten holes. Yeah. It and was he was like, like one down after like twelve or something, which is disgusting. unbelievable. Yeah. But you know, it's that's the stuff for me where you know you can always you can always pick up little things mm -hmm. on the practice ground watching people. Yeah. I think it shows you the power of the short game as well. It? It's just like, you know, Seve there struggling so much, but he's still grinding. He's still getting around in more or less level par. And that's, it, short game can save you so much. If yeah, you this can just this get the... takes all the pressure off the rest of your game. Yeah. It's dead simple. Yeah. yeah. So it, the more comfortable you feel with the practice you've done, the clubs you've got in the bag, mm -hmm. your action, the way the greens are running, have you you know, are you predicting that first bounce? Is everything feeling good around the short game? Go play golf. Yeah. Go play golf. Be super yeah. aggressive. And you don't mind being missing greens, do you? Even on, even on the wrong side or whatever. You know, you still you still got a chance of getting up and down. And you some of your best rounds. To hold it. Yeah, exactly. And and some of your rounds of golf. There's a difference in mindset. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of your rounds of golf. Do you do you get more satisfaction almost back in the day when we were at you know PJ Tour wins and all that sort of thing? Do you did you feel that? Um, you got satisfaction grinding a score out where you haven't hit it great tee to green, but you know you've walked off that golf course shooting the lowest score you can that day. Yeah, your mind, your mindset's, your mindset's definitely a bit better when yeah, you've left a load of shots out. Worse there. than hitting 17 greens in regulation. The one green you missed, you didn't get up and down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've gone and shot level par, mm. and you've missed every opportunity. Yeah, and you could have hit 65. And. The round where you've gone and shot 69, you've chipped in twice, mm. you've missed eight greens, all of those greens you've got up and down. Yeah. All right, I know what you need to go and do. You need, just yeah, need yeah, to go yeah. and clip yeah. a few balls on yeah. the lane. But you know, if you keep this to the same standard and you improve that, This there. is what I say to all the amateurs in the Pro-Am. Spend a bit more time on this stuff, 
because you know you you'll play and you'll spend most of your time whacking balls mm -hmm. on the range yeah so it's a bit more glamorous than driving just... the range but this is where you're going to save your scores there's no doubt about it and yeah. if you had some advice for uh, aspiring uh, tour pros or elite amateurs in terms of um, short game it's pretty much the same stuff we spoke about i guess it's getting that education it's getting that iq it's learning about what's right for you to carry and being able to adapt that's absolutely key but any anything when you when you sort of see the the up and coming players that anything you see that they, they maybe don't quite do that your experience would would be um, useful for them i don't really know if it's the up, up and coming players i just think it's like anything with with great amateurs it's giving them any piece of advice is you know don't don't be afraid to try to try everything mm. at this end of the bag to find out what works mm. But, you know, having and spending time with other players, better players yeah. that are much better at short game yeah. and just observing, because mm -hmm. that's, I was always a good observer, yeah. you know, even back in my pro shot days, yeah. um, you know, watching videos of Seve. Yeah. And then you, you go know, out watching, there after you shift and, then, and try and try and hit the same shot. Yeah. yeah. Emptying a bag of balls in the bunker yeah. and trying to hit the draw spin. Yeah. The cut I'll spin. Try to get out with three iron or whatever. Yeah. Just mucking around. Yeah. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of messing yeah. around should give you an archive. Yeah. Right? You go and you get that lie and you're like, I know what to do with this because yeah. I've hit it 500 yeah, exactly. times. And you've got the, the experience. Past. Okay. And it gets into the system. Your instinct goes up. And I think the only secret really is hard work. Let's be honest. It's hard, it's yeah, hard work. And being, and being directed in what you do, of course. It, you can't fake this bit. Mm hmm. You can fake sending it out there sometimes if you've yeah. got brute power, yeah. but this this bit is a whole di whole different piece of the puzzle that you need your ten thousand plus hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. To work this bit yeah. out. No, that's cool. Right, so I've one more there, and I'm gonna we're gonna play a softer shot now. We've got less green to work with. Good. Yeah, cool. Right, okay, so we're going to go to this pin on the right now. Now, we've got this ridge you can run down. Obviously, you can play a low one here and sort of skip it down, but we're going to see if we can carry this sort of, you know, around about four yards short of the pin and see if we can spin this a bit more. But I don't want to see a lob shot here. I want to see like a, you know, like a mid-flight, but a bit of a higher spinner. Yeah. What what the club you got there? Well, lob wedge. Uh-huh. Um, and the lies we'll talk about. I'm giving you sort of fairly friendly lies, and we'll make it a little bit yeah, tighter in a minute. okay. Yeah. Um... How high are you going to hit this? Do you, do you also, do you see I the try, height? Do you, try, do you yeah. see trajectory, yeah? Yeah. So I, again, I'm not trying to flop it. So I'm going to try and hit a compressed, flighted shot, which hopefully has two bounces, checks, may dribble out a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, again, you don't want to decelerate on this one to have the ball roll up the face and turn into that I think that's the shot. danger sometimes that people do have with a really lofted wedge is that if you don't if you do get 10 percent slow it'll go up the face so we got to commit if you We've go a little bit slow at 56 it doesn't quite happen as much but correct. you're using that because you want to get the height yeah well i need fair, i need it for the in. spin yeah yeah that oh, lovely yeah good shot Really good. Come on, Mop. If you stay there, you that? that finish. I mean, I think what people can learn here, just go to the finish you're getting there, all the way through to the finish, is just how much you've turned there. I mean, look at that rotation. Yeah. You know, and that's so important. Because I see, biggest fault I see on this shot is where the player will just totally stop moving. So they might release it pretty well this way, but they're just like this. And you must yeah. see that a lot as well. Right, but foot, what, right foot stays down. Exactly. Which is you've, got to, you've got to keep moving this way. And that's yeah. what you did there. You know, so well. Shot, by the way. <laughs> Well, maybe that's the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, the shot I see most with an amateur from this position is they try and help it in the air. Yeah, sure. And that's one of the biggest things that I try and say to them in a pro-am is, what, why, are you, why are you trying to help it in yeah, the air? Yeah, so when you, you say help in the air, you're seeing the player do this. Well, they're doing, they're doing and that. leaning back, yeah. So they'll end up doing the right foot stays down, and they'll pull back yeah. and they'll try and... Yeah, and this is their way to try and help it in the air this way. Just try and get yeah. it in the air. And it's yeah. like, it's it's so, 
you know, you've got a lob wedge for a reason. You've got 60 degrees, you know. If yeah, let, let loft to do work, right? You, you've got all the loft in the world. Like, stay committed and actually... And you've got that ball on that left heel. Yeah, I play it forward slightly. A little bit more weight on your left side. Yeah, cool, right. So what happens if, then, we get a lie... I don't want to get too cruel. We might get cruel in a minute. But what happens if we get a lie where... <laughs> go as cruel as you is, want. Um, that one. Little so I, would, I would say that's, that's not too bad, but no, that, okay. that plays pretty different. So when you put the club behind the ball here, so I talk about sort of traffic lights in terms of um, the lie reading. So this was what I would call a green light. You know, a lie like that, I know I can slide my club under that ball yeah. all day long. Yeah. This one here is yeah, well, firmer, you see. Yeah, there's less, that's, there's that's less grass. Sits a little yeah. lower and less give. Yeah. So. So I'm looking at playing that differently. Yeah. With less yeah. release. Yeah. And then you get the red light. I mean, the red light's obvious. That would be kind of in that hole. Well, you. I mean, you get your defaulting all the way back to, to just knocking it on and playing yeah. all of the ridge exactly. on that. You're not so, gonna. Yeah. You know. So let's go. Let's go. What I call amber light first. So it's kind of sitting down fairly tight. Yeah. What are you changing for this one? So you're putting it down. You can feel it's kicking a bit. You can feel yeah. it's firmer. Yeah. Well, you, 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 well, I'm looking at my bounce going you know i i really have to be 100 percent on this one mm -hmm. so like, like what, my, what you mean is you've got to land that perfectly I, you, if you I land it if you land it half an inch further back it's gone right bounce kicking yeah. in you could yeah. either, either flub it or get the club that's going to bounce too much so my ball position is going to creep back slightly mm -hmm. because i want to make sure i'm all ball yeah and nothing else and what about, so, do, you, do you lean the shaft a little bit more? Do you put a little yeah, bit more lean yeah, in there? They, they, they probably naturally will yeah, be without, the even, back, yeah. without even thinking mm -hmm. about it. I'll just go into default by going, oh, there's no What's real... happened here, if we can get in tight on this there. If you go go your previous position where you were like this way, you can see the, the gap here, under here. Now, if you then put the ball further back and lean, you can see how that gets much closer. Yeah. And that's what you're seeing. That means you can then feel like you can get into the back of the ball yeah. there more, yeah? Well, and obviously I know that I'm not going to be able to stop it as quick as the other yeah, one. So then you're going to change so your landing spot, yeah. my, my landing distance is mm -hmm. pulling all the way back. That's fantastic. So fantastic. You played that so well. That's beautiful. And you see it was a slightly lower ball flight and a little bit more divot, which yep. is what you wanted which to is, do well, because which, you're trying to get into the back of the ball more. Which is exactly what's going to happen because the ball's gone back a bit. Yeah. Sharp lean gone forward slightly, uh -huh. and you are going to bottom out yeah. and take take a yeah. look. Take and a that, look. That's what I call the IQ up. side of it. I mean, that's a seriously good IQ. If you can read the lie and just change it, I think that's the big lesson for people golfers. What about if we're playing from that divot now? So you, you're actually <laughs> playing from that divot you just made. So it's sitting down like that. I mean, look. Uh, I mean, that's in a hole now, right? It's not nice. So from shot one to two to three, mm -hmm. I just continue to move that ball position back mm -hmm. slightly. Mm -hmm. So as you say, you know, I'm going to end up having a bit more shaft lean. So that's now, yeah, right toe now, a little bit more lean. It's gone in lower and it's just starting to pull up and check up now. It's going to chase a little bit. And you fit that, what, maybe six, seven feet past the hole? Yeah. Do you, um, and I think it's also important you set expectations. Yeah, I mean, I mean, from that lie, six, seven feet is a great result. But, it, you know, it's amazing how many amateurs I coach where they'd be like, well, why has it gone six foot past the pin? And I've got higher expectations than someone like you. You know, and that happens quite a lot. I'll be, I'll be buzzing with that. <laughs> that I was mean, a great shot. You know, we, we work on round the clock, eight foot around the hole, and I should hold 20 out of 24. Okay. Right, so yeah, that's the pressure from, I put yeah, myself yeah, yeah, under. Yeah. So if I know that... You, your stats are pretty good from there. You know that mathematically you're going to probably make that Mathematically, I'm not going to be 20 from 20 foot under tournament conditions, mm -hmm. but doing my little circuit that I yeah. do, I yeah. try and force that issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But with inside six feet, that is a high, that's a high conversion rate. Yeah. So again, I take the pressure off of this shot mm -hmm. by knowing, providing I hit half decent shot inside six feet, yeah. that's really acceptable. You've got a great chance of holding the putt then, yeah. What about, you're in a divot here, well not divot, it's a really tight line, a bit of a hole there, and you've got to go in the air, because you've got a bunker in front of you. Yeah. All right? Yeah. What are you doing there? Would you put the toe down? Do you ever go low in the toe? Um, I, so again, so, so the way that bounces on the heel, 
Yeah. Tapers in. So there, I yeah. would. I would. Okay, probably, so you're going more heel down. I would probably because go it heel down because it tapers in there and it gets sharper there. Yeah. And my, so my strike generally with short game shots. Again, if you look at, if you look at Adam Scott's wear. On on his wedges, mm -hmm. his wedges is slightly more toe wear. Mm -hmm. Mine is slightly more heel wear. Mm -hmm. I shank it every now and then. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh my god, you shank it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, don't worry about it. Like it, it, it happens. Because, yeah. <laughs> but like if I look, if I take a brand new if I take a brand new lob wedge and I go in a trap, I generally see a scratch you see, line. You see a wear pattern go down. Yeah. And that gets really close to the mm -hmm. hosel. So that's why I quite like mm -hmm. having Relief a really that. tight yeah. amount of um of bounce in, in that area. So, so you're going go... lower hands now, yeah. much lower, you sort of down more on your knees, a little bit more out to win, I'm guessing, and dig that heel down. There you go, great shot. There we go, going high from so, there. Again, acceptable. Yeah. You know, I you know, the the divot itself is very shallow mm -hmm. because but you've done the work at a dress, haven't you? Yep. Yeah, the, yep. Your, your dress has kind of hit the shot for you, really. Yep. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, that's cool. But what about this front pin where uh, there's less green to work? We don't need to hit it like super high here, but we do need to get a little bit more spin. Um, Let me get a towel. Let's say you've got to carry the first, first two yards on the green. So I don't want you hitting this in too low. But I want to see like a shot that's going to be mid-flight, but like really softer on the on the first second bounce. Again, are you are you going with with lob here? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, or what? Yeah, that's it. So you released that quite a lot there, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. How much do you think about in transition trying to avoid that kind of pull on it? You know, that that move from the top where, I mean, what's Seve play? Just he just seems to let the club just fall almost well, on its, its own. It's almost own like gravity, you know? the action you're making there, one handed, is it's, it's like that's the action that Seve used, right, mm. all the time. Mm. You know, he would, he yeah. was very much always like soft with his knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, and he'd have this transition that would almost take five minutes and he was just so smooth and relaxed there, yeah. It just, it, you know, anyone that's watching should just go back and have a little look at some of, you know, some, some, some of Seve's best. It was like, it was, it was, it was like he knew how to just, from any lie and any position with any club, mm. you could say to him, there's eight iron. Yeah. And he would just, you know, yeah. he would, he would, and would people just, said to just... me when they've seen this ball go through the air, it was almost like it was just defying gravity. It was like just like hanging. But it's like it's, it's like you could see when he was getting set up, his mind was just like yeah. crunching the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see the lie. I see. You can see all these little numbers running yeah. around, going, "Okay, I'm going to play it." You know, going to get in there and. You see, I love that how you played that. Yeah. I love that. Uh, that's great. Okay, that was really interesting. So I think, should we get some pitch shots now? We'd love to see you hit yep. 40 to 70 yard shots yep. and have a look at that area of the game, which I know is a bit of a mystery for a lot of players. And that. Yep. So we're in some pitch shots now. Uh, so we're going to go this front pin, which is 60 yards. Okay. And you've got your 60. Yeah. You were just saying they generally use that 60 quite a lot of the time. And we were having a chat about, you know, I. I I think for you playing in the tour course as you're on, I think people don't appreciate, by the way, just how much you need to spin the ball on a tour course and a tournament set up golf course where it's been prepped for the tournament versus yep. a standard golf course. Yep. And I think for you, six is the right, the right call, but I think for most amateur golfers, it probably isn't, particularly a four degree bounce like you've got there, it's not the safest. Yeah, I what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I know you're right, because if, again, if we stand here, visualize what we've got out, out there, 60 yards, probably got 12 paces between the edge of the green and the pin. It's already sitting sloping slightly away from us. So my default brain will turn around and say tournament conditions. This ball's got to have as much spin on it as possible. So I need to use the most lofted club. 
and I need to land it in a position where it's over the front edge enough because look at the front edge, it's mm -hmm. all leaning towards us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to carry it and then it's a downside. I'm going to want to take yep. that out and that first bounce should end up having a skip effect before it sees before any grab. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to flight it, get it to grab on the first bounce, take two bounce, three bounce, and it should just trickle out after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. so, so the detail again you're getting into, you're really thinking about the first bounce, what the spin will be like on the first bounce, what it'll be like on the second, and then the third probably. So visualization for me again, and I'll visualize the shot on, and I've already had a look up there as well, mm -hmm. because we've got a little, got a little, little bit of a low hanging, hanging yeah. limb, but I'll be looking at the tripod, seeing that as my, that as my initial thought of line. Yeah, because you're going to see it kicking to the right off that a bit, yeah? I want to see it skip a bit to the right because A, when I set up to it, my face is slightly open, so I know I'm going to add a, a, a little bit of cut spin. Everything's aiming to the tripod, the face is slightly open. Pulled it. A little bit, a bit like the reaction on the ball there. Come on, Mark. And that was quite a low flight there. That probably launched about 26, 27. Yeah, I, it, again, like I, I, on my release, I kind of, I late release some of these shots mm -hmm. as well. So again, the flight comes down a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't early release it. Yeah. So you should see that's, RPR that's what would shot. annoy me that. Yeah. That would absolutely drive me. That looked me like it went up the face a bit there. Because it's, Came up it's a tiny bit of these, not deceleration, but yeah. I didn't add, I didn't yeah. add um, enough acceleration. Yeah. It's on the right line, the right strike, but it landed 12 feet short yeah. of where I wanted no, it to land. It almost stayed on the face a bit long, didn't it? You know, it didn't quite move, move forward enough. That's good. It's a great shot. Yeah, love. Third bounce longer. is just grabbing. Third bounce is good. Okay, the next pin, so we're getting towards 70 yards, 75 yards now. Still with 60. Has it? Yeah, still 60. Yeah. You know. Um, and you're saying you can hit it to 105 and flight it down. Squeeze it to 105, yeah. which is mm -hmm. it's quite a long way. But again, I wouldn't do that if the greens were super soft mm -hmm. and the green was sitting towards me. Or it was, or it was. Quick. What number do you think you could hit sixty without it screwing back, given average conditions? You know, too much. Do you think you could, like an, an eighty-five number? Yeah, eighty. A nice number for me. I've always had a ninety as a just yeah. a just a swing. Yeah. Where I I don't have to go at it. It's just a normal swing shot, and it normally pitches. My most consistent number with lobbers ninety. Yeah. Without having because to. Because you know it's going to go one bounce, two bounce, stop. Right. It's if, not moving too much. Again, if we got soft greens, I'll always. That, that would have to be a 56, mm -hmm. like just a little push 56. Yeah, good movement. Again, you just, just rotate so well through the ball. And I think that's the other lesson here is that you, how many times you hear the old saying, keep your head down, like through the ball, and you must hear amateurs all the time. It's like a stop shot. phrase, isn't it? Someone said a bad shot, your head yeah. came up. Whereas your head actually looks, you were like, I get, you're I go following with it. it. Yeah, you I go like the old, you know, Deval of the old days where you're opening well, up Deval, and Deval, Annika, Stenson, yeah. they all go. I yeah. go with, I go with the shot. Yeah. Where you see a lot. Uh, because they get told to keep their head down and just can't yeah. turn the chest through the ball. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, once it's, once it's activated on the downswing, I'm happy to go. And you're just nipping that, aren't you? You are just nipping that. And you just hear that strike, it is so pure. That is good. A bit short. Can you imagine now that when the green is, is tilted towards you and it's super, super spinny? Yeah. So you would now go 50, 56. Yeah, okay. So I want to see like a flight in there that's going to be like super calm, like a really calm flight. I just can very dead on that second bounce, right? It's just calm. One bounce stop. Okay, I I would immediately turn Where's around then and say if I've got a very short distance like that, I'm gonna to start to open the face and I'm almost gonna try I'm almost gonna try and cut spin it slightly. And you can just see that's got that's not got a ton of spin on it as it looks. It's actually rolling out a bit more like a putt at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. So I would always be afraid 
that I can't stop that. That's not going to stop. If you were playing into it. If it was really steep, yeah, then yeah. no problem. Yeah. So when you're at carry numbers, yeah. what, how are you feeling? Because obviously there's like a lot of golfers use like clock face systems or whatever. Um, what do you think to a clock face? Is it something you use? I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the nice take it there, like, I'm not that. the, I'm not the, you know, some people call it shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more of the, I'm more of the visual feel mm -hmm. guy and I've generally worked on my numbers, hopefully enough where yeah. if, So you can feel it, you can feel a 65, you know, you're over the ball, you're almost saying 65, 65. You just feel in the 65 because yeah. you practiced it because you can feel that number. Correct. Yeah. So you're very much feel based. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm mainly feel based as opposed to going the other way, because how many times, how many times, you know, during the time of standing over the shot, you need to start going through one, two, three, four, does the wind change? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden it's gone from, you know, right to left to downwind. Mm -hmm. And now if I go and play my, yeah shoulder to shoulder yeah so you're reacting more so i'm trying to feel yeah. i'm trying to feel i'm trying to feel the condition yeah. a bit more yeah. than and play off the instinct side of it mm -hmm. rather than at what number uh what yardage would you sort of stop getting a number for example like 20 or 30 you know, where where do you like numbers from great shot um, there i like that i almost had a bit of draw that one a bit of a square of face not a, not as much check up mm. yeah I, I i i stop I stop under 40 yards. Okay, so you don't, you don't want a number if you've got, say, 35. You if I've got stop. 40, I'll go and pace it. Okay. And then I'll go, I'll go and walk all the way up there, look at my yeah. landing spot. Yeah. If you start getting any more than that, I'm conscious to, I don't want to you know, it's going to take quite a bit of time to go and walk mm -hmm. 50 up and 50 back. Mm -hmm. You're going to take too much time. Mm -hmm. So I generally would, I generally would start to look at a number and then, and then play it off of a number. But again, walking is good if you're close enough to a green. I mean, I how many times do you see things? You do, how many times when you don't walk it, where you played a shot and you say, oh, I didn't realise there was this much green between the, uh, between the fringe and the pin. You just don't see it, do you? Or again, some of the courses that we play where you, you get up there and you go, oh, that's down grain just yeah. on that first yeah. eight feet. So it's going to change the first goes, bounce. First bounce changes. You could end up hitting it to eight feet instead of hitting it stiff. Yeah, yeah. Big difference. Yeah. I mean, not really advising amateurs to do that on a Sunday morning game. I think they'll drive everyone crazy. But, but I think amateurs, no. even if they just took three or four steps or... Just use their time a little bit wiser. Once you know, the playing partner's over there playing a shot out of the bunker, if they just get a few seconds to walk, even if they walk 10 yards up, yeah, that's a, that's they're going to get a little, a little bit look. Yeah. Having a look. The other thing I'd say, which which a lot of that, like I see with amateurs, I'm doing it all the time. Mm. One shot, yeah. clean the grooves. Yeah. So many amateurs that, you know, they've got they've got a little shot where they need a bit of spin. Yeah. And they've pulled the club out the bag. They've still got half the last fairway on it. I mean, the grooves are full up. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. the will in the world with a softball and a yeah. and a wedge with no real grooves because it's full. It's Change not, the bin, it's, it's going to launch gonna out, stop. it's just not going to do what you Ball's want. Ball's going to roll up the yeah. face, you're going to get a jumper. It's yeah. like, yeah. you know. Great lesson there, clean your clubs, absolutely. Clean your clubs, stop <laughs> being a lazy bastard, clean your clubs. <laughs> go on, one more, and we're going to go into the bunker. What shot are you playing? I'm going I'll 56. Play, I'll play 56. Uh, Land it on that third ball, six foot left of the pin. There we go. Pin high, nearly hit that third ball. Hit it a little heavy. Yeah. But that, so hit that little heavy but again, with 14 you're down, degrees you're down about. To 14, it saved you. Yeah. Eight feet. It's not. Yeah. It's not disaster. No, like, you know. Again, you're in, that, you're in that zone where you're going to hold most eight footers. Yeah. But you never, you never tell anyone you hit that slightly no, heavy because they don't know on TV, oh, do they? Every shot. <laughs> All right. And you turn around and internally you're going, oh, I got away with that. I just completely chunked that. Right. Okay. So we're in the bunker. Before we get in the bunker, though, I'd like to talk about the Dyna 2012, which is for me, and I'm sure a lot of people watching that all-time sporting moment. I mean, I'm talking across all sports. Um, you were 10-4 down on Saturday, and then I think it was Luke Donald got the, and, and his partner got Luke the point. Luke and Sergio. Sergio got the point to make it 10-5. Yeah, they were down and turned that match they around. They turned it around, and then you and Rory were playing. And, I mean, at 10-5, if it went 11-5 away from home, 
there was just absolutely no chance whatsoever you were finished. But ten and a half, five and a half hasn't happened as a turnaround. Yeah. And but if ten, you got six, to six, ten, six. it means you're, you are to in eight points out of twelve. It's kind of difficult, but it's not impossible. Well it's been done. It's so been it's done. doable. Exactly. So in your mind it was doable. And you know, for you to you birdie the last five holes, right? I mean I mean it's just how do you birdie the last five holes? So in terms of like mentally, you must have known you had to love birdie the last five, more or less. I mean, the guys you were playing yeah, played I mean, unbelievably well as well. Do you just isolate each shot and say, right, I've got to just hit the fair, I've got to hit the ground with a hole foot? You don't think about, obviously, I've got to birdie the last five. I mean, I'd love to get inside your mind of what, what happened in that sort of last two hours on that Saturday afternoon. I mean, everything becomes super simple at that point. So it's you have to win every hole. Yeah. So that bit was probably the easiest bit. Yeah. It wasn't like you had to hold. It wasn't like you had to hold on to a lead. Yeah. We had to win the match. Yeah. And we won. So you had to do. So, so, whether it was Rory or I, it was do what you got to do. Yeah. To birdie every hole coming in the house, because they were playing pretty good. Yeah. At the time. So how many, how so, many holes did you win out of those five? Did you win three? Because they they must have. Yeah. The, so the, we. The drivable foot par four. So Rory won thirteen, the par three. Yeah. Made an unbelievable two, by the way, like 235 yard yeah, par three, yeah. which was easier for him. I yeah. was going with hybrid. Yeah. He was going in with an iron, so yeah. it was a lot easier. So I was very was thankful that he whipped it on there yeah. to about 20 feet and rolled that one in. The par five, um, the par five was halved with birdie. Mm -hmm. We won 15 mm -hmm. with birdie. Yeah. So we both took we both took the opportunity. We switched up and went. I teed off first, hit it in the back trap. Yeah. He teed off first, hit it in the back trap. Yeah. I hit it in the back trap. Yeah. We then had two bunker shots to play. They had one go at the green, hit it in the hazard. Yeah. So then laid up, knocked it on. And you hit it they quite can, close there, didn't you? Was it about six feet or so? I played a bunker shot from about 15. It, it was quite a long bunker shot, actually. Yeah. But it was all with me in terms of... It was feeding down, It was all it? feeding down to yeah. the pin, so it was yeah. a relatively easy bunker shot. Yeah. Under the pressure terms, it probably wasn't. Yeah. But for me, it was just like a simple, smooth, accelerated, get it out, let it release like 25 feet to yeah. the pin. Uh -huh. Stiff. Um, won the next with birdie. Hold about... Uh, that was I, a long I think one, I hit hybrid. It? I think I, yeah, that was... 25 yeah, 30 feet yeah and they had a bit of break i remember yeah left yeah. to right yeah. coming in a bit right to left at yeah. the end went in the left left side and that got what was this match score then after after going into, that got you to one down that got us to going on to 17 that got us to one up one up yeah so one up in the match then it's at that the point three isn't it then it's the par three and zach johnson hit it in there to two feet yeah so, so you've, you've got a birdie then so we have to make birdie yeah Rory, I think hits it just just on the fringe left of the green. I hit it into about ten feet behind the hole. Yeah. Sevy's Sevy's um, yeah. not Sevy. Ollie's there at that yeah, point. Yeah. And he comes up on the he comes up on the tee box. Okay, okay. Um, he says, uh, just seen the putt. It was someone else. I can't remember who had, who had hit that previous putt, and it breaks a little little bit right to left. <laughs> so I'm walking off the tee box, and I'm like, not really what you did. <laughs> like. Was he, was he exactly in my spot yeah, or was he yeah, yeah. a foot yeah. to the left? Because yeah. if it's a foot to the left, that part might not be breaking right to the left. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to not ignore him because mm. he's a captain. Mm. Mm. I'm also trying to turn around and in my head say, I've got to hold his part because Zach's in there at two feet. He's yeah. already given, I've given him mentally yeah. him holding that part. Uh -huh. So go down there, obviously hold the part, which was great didn't really move that much mm -hmm. um and then so you're on 18 you're one and up. then they hit it in close again on 18 yeah and you hit a nice what do you hit in there then what was it uh seven iron seven iron that's about 15, 15 feet 15 feet great shot they're already yeah. um Duffner's already in there tight takes the opportunity because Zach was further away to hit his putt first yeah, to roll it in so yeah. then yeah it's it's all on me at that point. Yeah. I have to hold the putt to um, to win the match and, and, and take that extra. And the arena point. there, just that I'm getting goosebumps now. The arena yeah, with ev everyone oh, behind there, um, and you you stalked it out, didn't you? And you sort of was it down? Was it off the right? Was it downhill right to left? A touch? Yeah. Right edge or? No, it was outside. Outside. Yeah. 
And can you remember that? When, you, when, you were, when you were hole. walking around, I mean, when you when you saw that putt and you saw the line, did did you were you hundred? You could see what it was going to do. You knew what the break was. I knew what you? it was going to do when I walked on the green. Yeah. So it was like, um, I smile because it's just funny because I walk around the hole and I'm scouring the green like it's a grid formation where like if you imagine if you imagine you poured water on the green where would the water, the water flow yeah. so you can see the break mm. of the part so i'm mentally picking up this picture and i get around the back of the hole my ball's here holes here and i'm over there and i then sort of scan all the american players one by one probably shouldn't yeah. say what mentally in my no, head no. i actually no. want to have happen mm. because but that's almost the, the yeah. mentality I had because the only thing that crossed my mind at that point was the excitement, the internal excitement of what's going to happen when I hold the putt. Right. Okay. So not anything. So not any. So, not you, any so doubt. You, you had slightly let yourself get ahead because you were like, "I'm going to love this moment. Yeah. I'm going to love what is about to happen. Yeah. And so powerful, isn't it? Well, it, it is now. It wouldn't have been if I'd have missed it, but... But, but were you but, certain in your mind you were going to hold that? Yeah, 100 hundred yeah. percent. There was not one percent of, if I miss the putt, well, it's going to be ten and a half, five and a half. Yeah. It's more of, scoured the putt, yeah. scoured the US team, had a little look at my team, yeah. saw where they're all standing. Because they were sort of, if you, if you were putting here, they were sort of behind you there, weren't they? Yeah, so as, as I were putting, European team were directly behind me, and the US team was sort of behind me slightly to the right. Yeah. And and that's all I could think about. I could I could only think about when that putt dropped in, turn into the team. Yeah. And just like And what was it like when it dropped? That I, feeling. Yeah, I, was, I mean is, is that must have got to one of the best feelings of your life. I yeah, mean, it was that amazing. Just... It was amazing. Yeah. Because you you know, you know at that point you've energized the team. Yeah. It's the last part of the day. I always think that Saturday, that Saturday moment, that like, Saturday last game in the Ryder Cup is a fantastic time of a tournament. Yep, yep. And you, I mean, you switched it. We're still, still a long way behind, but you're giving, you're giving the Europe chance, giving them hope, absolute hope they could do this. But it was funny because the, 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 mental, the mental dynamic within the team room, because someone said, okay, Saturday night, you're going to be 10 6 down. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be, if you told you'd, that on the, the opening ceremony, you'd, you'd be, be demoralised. Yeah. You'd turn around and go, well, we can't win. But 10-4 down an hour earlier. 10-4 down an hour, hour earlier, 10-6, yeah. a team room that have just gone absolutely, completely crackers and a sing-song. It, it was what it, was it like when you got it back into a locker room? Was everyone it was just mad. It was all they singing like, it was all, yeah. it was going off. It was yeah. all, it was like, it was absolutely wild. And that was nice because the atmosphere, the, the energy in the yeah, room yeah. wasn't 10-6. No. It felt like it was 10-8. Look what we've just done. Yeah. Where are we at? Yeah. And everyone's like excited and about the thing. And well. Momentum. So, so we won Luke and Sergio winning the match, their yeah. match to turn yeah. that around. Massive momentum. Yeah. We won our match. Massive momentum. It was the last part of the day. We walked yeah. in the locker room. The Americans are now got that yeah. 1%. They've gone from thinking oh. we've won this to actually... We still got to turn up tomorrow. Um, and then the singles went. Obviously, the the, the, the well, order we, came out well. We were then... all excited to to read the singles mm. as we sat there in the team room. You know, just players and captain and vice captain went down the order. Happy, yeah, happy. Yeah, Everyone happy. Liked their match. Yeah, buzzing. <laughs> gonna do the business. Yeah, gonna do the business. Yeah. How do you like that match? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, then Rory turns up. With two minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, you got the wrong side, didn't you? Um, but so um, absolutely great, great. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, just amazing. It was. Um, it was pretty. It was. And the was, whole Seve thing, seven, Seve on the arm. Amazing, absolutely and amazing. Lazabal as captain, and just my golf bag is still fully intact with tees. The ball that I hold on it's eighteen, fantastic. ball still yeah. in the bag. The yardage there? book is in my bag. Yeah. The pencils in my bag. The tee, the pin sheets in my bag. Yeah. Um, you know, everything that, that did its job. Yeah. Well, for me, the that's trousers, the, the belt, the shirt, the, yeah, it's, totally all my, it's, it's all in my, it's all in my office. It's ball, like, so. it's awesome. It's it, I awesome. think, I think the eighties Ryder Cups were fantastic as well. I remember, you know, the 85, 87, 89 were brilliant. 95 was fantastic. Wasn't it? A good yeah. turnaround in 95. That was nine, seven, wasn't it? Yeah. 
but I mean, I think, I think that'll take some beating that one. So special, yeah, was... special memories. I've right. given you an average lie there, like a standard depth uh, I lie. I quite like that. That's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that's like, okay. That's, I'll be delighted with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, let's play something then. I'm going to make the lies a little bit more interesting. So, again, is your 60 there? Yep. Okay. I easy. generally, I'll only ever use 56. Longer bunker shot? Mm, for a much longer bunker shot. Yeah, okay. Because I will... 20, 30, 40 yards? It's, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be 30 point. yards. Yeah, okay. Really, before I start to default. Yeah. Uh -huh. back that way i use yeah. i generally use speed uh -huh. as my as my distance gauge uh -huh. um speed of chest chest turn uh, how quick are you moving through it i don't think about it that way uh -huh. i think about it speed of club speed of club okay we'll see. We'll so see. Yeah. energy we i mean it could relate comes from as that but yeah, comes okay. from yeah that. Fine. just how you see it but you get quite far away you know you get low when you lower the handle you have to open the lock don't you because yep. that it points left yeah yep. so that's good yeah so I'm a nice came out really straight really straight spin as well straight spin so that's one of the mm. that's one of the things that I feel I don't add tons of cut spin you obviously got your divot pattern now so I'm gonna straight the flag straight and that helps you hold more bunker shots right because it's not going to be it's so, not going to be landing spin be... to the right it's very hard to hold bunker shot bringing it in from sideways you can just too hear much, that bounce much. going through, can't you? Bit too much sand there, though. So yeah. I haven't hit bunker shots in a week. So um, you can tell because it's a little bit too much sand. Get a bit more. I actually laid that down in the sand there, didn't you? Bounce. If you set up this one, let's just talk through some of the bits. I think you set up beautifully there. So if you just set up to the ball, what people can learn here is how you've got the left foot flared out. Yep. Okay, and that helps you put a bit more pressure forward this way. Yeah, correct. Uh, yep. And you've got, yeah, your shoulders just a little bit more tilted there, which keeps it nice and shallow. And the shaft angle, this is really key, is like straight up and down. Yep. Like you're not putting any lean in there, so you're yep. protecting the bounce there, yeah? Correct, yep. And that's good. And also how far away you are. I mean, you've got quite a bit of knee flex, and that's got nice low hands there. Yeah. Okay, which again I'm helps. I'm not the guy that's... Going to stand really close there. Don't, can't do so it. the lower you get, obviously you're going to put more cupping in the wrist there. That's going to yep. promote a bit more hinge and a little bit more release through it. Yeah. I was going to say, it's easier for me. I feel I feel when I really get in there, I can feel and allow yeah. the hinge to work. Yeah. You know, and again, you know, they're all, to be honest, that's all a bit, they're all a bit heavy in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's all a fraction too much sand. But again, you're using so, the bounce well though, aren't you? And it's, you know, it's, it's friendly, yeah? Yeah. Can I talk about a lie? Because this is what, I, again, I don't think amateurs quite understand how the lie affects the spin of the ball. Yeah. So let's say we've, we've got a lie, even if it was, say, like that. Yeah. Look, might look quite subtle. It might, someone might watch and say, well, I don't see any difference. But if you're looking at that lie, same pin, yeah. What's that going to do to the ball for you? And how I need you to adapt? land that six feet, at least six feet shorter than those yeah. ones. Brilliant, because it's going to have less spin, because the sand isn't going to go under the ball yeah. as much. You can't get as much spin. Yeah. And if I gave you uh, this lie. Again, I mean, that. Is that a few more feet? Yeah, that's that's just really your, your you know, you're literally going to use a shot where you're just going to be hitting down on the ball. There's you slow mo that down that ball is not rotating that much backwards at all no by no. the time it's probably eight feet in the air yeah i bet it's almost trying it's to move forwards yeah then. yeah and that's what you're predicting so that's fascinating so you're actually looking at the lie and anticipating how much that ball is going to release out now if i gave you this lie right that's yeah. a spinner lovely you can land that and stop it dead we can do anything with absolutely that. what you want you could play there. you could play heavy you could play the heavy one and land it and roll it yeah. out yeah or you could get in there and hit that really yeah tight to the ball and, and get it and stopping really it. so let's see you play this one then okay would you would you get a little bit more left on this would you sort of yeah know, would so you... ball position's gone back a tiny yeah, bit so you get a little bit steeper into i it. don't i don't want the club to bounce and come up in the sand mm -hmm. so i almost i almost want the leading edge to stay going down slightly yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you look at your divot there, you've displaced more sand. You've yep. hit down into it more, which I think is a really big point for people watching. When you do get those lies that are semi-plugged or down a bit, you also want to imagine your divot is getting deeper as it's yep. getting longer. Yep. And the nice lie, the spinner lie, if we call it that, your divot here would be 
absolutely level from front yeah, to back. Yeah, you you yeah, skip it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, I mean you can see you can see the amount of Yeah, I mean that's at least a foot I mean, of sand there, isn't it? Over a foot. That's yeah. That's a that's a load of sand mm -hmm. and you're not you know, you're almost as you would say, you're levelling out and nipping. Yeah, that good. Okay. What about if you had a short side one? If you were going to this pin here, the lie is okay. Yeah. And you've got to carry it to what six, seven yards. Yeah. What are you changing to do? I know you're saying you manage your speed, but you've got to get spin as well here. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to be trying to be a little steeper and across the line. Yeah. And I'm actually almost going to try and maintain and hold as much loft on that face yeah. as I possibly so can. Get it face to face there. Yeah. Really keep that so, on. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's Again, good. I've hit it a bit too heavy. I think what you so I get I get sometimes when I haven't hit bunker shots yeah. a lot. Yeah. Like. That's an okay shot, mm -hmm. but I'm not happy with that. Let's do it again. Like, so, you know. And also what I've noticed now, you've actually got a little bit lower yeah. for the shorter shot. It looks like yeah. you've got a bit further away. You, you're sitting down a bit more and the hands have gone lower. Yeah. Here's one more. Yeah, that was better, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, yeah. was better. Like your, your arc it's there was nice. It's stop that. I mean, yeah, it's on a downslope. And again, it's going back to expectations, right? You know, it's yeah, absolutely. You know, in a tournament, you would, in a tournament, it depends how, depends how cheeky you want to get, right? You know, do you, you know, sometimes when you feel you're warm and your game's perfect, like I might be trying to land it, Augusta, where it's like it's pure grass right up until it drops in, yeah, drops into the bunker. Yeah, I might be on some shots trying to visually land it. Yeah. Like a, a foot, foot out of the foot trap, on, yeah. which is, which is again that that's but, like a margin of like, yeah. you got to be so you know so yeah. super precise. So, I mean that was nip. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's. You happy with that one? Yeah, that's a perfect strike. Yeah, so that's perfect. And then and you got you know, then you've held it. You got three okay ones that. Yeah, we got one that, one, that, one that's one dead, that's and you got three. You got to hold a foot. And that's yeah. the difference, isn't it? Yeah. Right. A lot of people struggle with plug glides, so show me this one there. That's like sat down. Not very nice. Same pin. Well, we've also got in these bunkers, yeah, which is great. We've got a little bit of a rub rubbery, mm -hmm. rubbery rubber texture under, yeah, underneath. Yeah. So it's like, you know, am I gonna, am I gonna reach that? But we'll have to wait think, and see. I think we're okay. I think there's plenty. I of think there's there. enough there. Yeah. So what's quite interesting there, which, which which I like, is actually you played that with a wide open face. And if you go back over over the years, people will tell you to shut the shut face. Shut it. Yeah. But again, would you ever shut the face if you wanted to run run it out a bit more? What run it out of a plug line? Well, you know, would you land the top spin it a little bit when it comes. Yeah, out? I mean, like you. Yeah, I mean, but again, it depends how. But look how soft that's coming it, out of a it, plugged lie. It depends how powdery, again, and how consistent the trap is, right? So if you can trust the trap, mm. that there's loads of sand underneath. Mm. Like it's, you know, you can take all the speed out of it. I mean, look how soft that's coming out. And again, it's a bit like that shot we played earlier. You're kind of really using the heel there, aren't you? Yeah. It's wide open. And you're just digging the heel in behind it. Yeah, I'm not over accelerating through you know. it's almost like a and i see so many people like trying to kill a snake really and you do you just <laughs> you just you just chucking that heel into it aren't you and it's just popping it's up just popping out yeah good shot that's a great shot i'll tell you what the stuff i like doing at home messing around when i'm bored when you turn around and go right you know can you hit the can you hit the draw spinning? Can you really? So when you get a long bunker shot, you're trying to draw it a little bit more generally. There's a feeling to try and send it. Because you're trying to send the sand more forward, aren't you? That's yeah, there's a feeling goal. I am, yeah. yeah. Because you want to, you know, you want to be able to put the distance on it 
and I find it easier the lower I get, but. So that's a great shot. So you start with an open face, then you're drawing it through the sand. Drawing it through, but you yeah. do that and it's easier the lower you get to the ground. Yeah. But it's just like, it's the messing about bit where you can go, okay, like, do the opposite, get in a bit tighter to it, and are you going to try and have And try and spin it off the slope With there. a bit of cut spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the creative stuff, isn't it? That's the bit which is like, that's the fun yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, when totally. Got, when you've got that spare hour and you're like, yeah. right, how do I hit the shot where it's, you know, how do I hit the shot where 50 Bryson shot? Yeah, let's talk about that then, because that for me Absolutely was like... Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that, that was to win the ice open. Absolutely He's got to get it up shot. and down. He was sort of under lip. Lots of sand in that bunker as well. Yeah, there was, uh, there looked like there was tons of sand in there. And he's got to hit the number. He was on the upslope slightly, weren't yeah. he? So he was, he was kind of. And he just, he just absolutely, I mean, he released it. He really released the club. He had to add that lie, but he had a ton of speed, didn't he? That, that you had a load of speed through it. Yeah. And it just popped it up high there. I don't know how far that right pin is. Where are you going? Right. The right pin, yeah. Just, right just pin. over that, yeah, here. Well, that would have done you, wouldn't it? Okay. Right. Speed, right? So yeah, we speed, were talking yeah, earlier. Exactly. This is fascinating what you're saying. Six iron yeah. length shaft. Yeah. You think that gave him an advantage having the one length? I think it was I think I think he could get in there in a position where he could use all speed and leverage. Yeah. He can hit it heavy yeah. in a way. Yeah. Right? Where he can then allow the ball to do what it needed to do. Yeah. Once he worked out right, I need to land it. 40 yards, yeah. it's going to release 10, it's going to release yeah. 30 feet. Sort of fed down, but I think, it? yeah, that the, I think... the longest shaft, he's obviously going to even a little bit more speed, it's going to help we're him. We're taking the credit shot. away from Bryson. But... I know, no, but it's an interesting point. It might have just given him a little bit more. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, it was an incredible bunker shot. And that moment as well, a bit like the Medina moment, you know, that moment, you've got to hit the shot. But, got to hit it. You know, if you look at the putt Rory had from three feet past the pin, mm to the putt Bryson had from four feet short the pin, and you saw how difficult Rory's yeah. putt was coming back down. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had probably I was gonna say, I, I, People again, I think he's got a little bit of stick for obviously missing those putts, but that one in the last time. That was, was I a, mean, I, it was I, way more Can you explain how difficult diff that was? Way more difficult. I think um, Smiley Kaufman was commentating at the time, I think from the coverage that I was listening mm. to, and he said, oh, it's maybe an inside left putt. Mm. And then we all saw when he stood to it, yeah. went inside left, he was aiming yeah. almost a cup, a cup and a change almost. outside. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he struck it perfectly. Mm -hmm. and you but it saw was one it. of those that was just always going to move away, wasn't it? But you see, I mean, that's a, that's a nasty putt to yeah. leave yourself. So for Bryson to be 50 yards away, 55 yards away, and to be able to give himself that putt. Which was a simple putt, wasn't putt, it? Putt, it uphill, was, whatever yeah. the distance was. Yeah. I, mean, he's, I mean, he's it. Yeah. I mean, he says it's the best shot he's ever hit in his life. Yeah, 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 exactly. In his life, which I would agree. Yeah. It's pretty. It was, <laughs> Doing as a moment, open. it was pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was cool. Magic. Listen, thanks today. Absolutely superb. I think just uh, it's been fascinating listening to the insights and seeing your place at so, so many amazing shots. And I Pleasure. think um, a lot of the golfers watching are going to take a lot from it into in their own games. And it's, it's a lot of it is that IQ and it's that understanding, it's that education that you've developed from from so many years and hours and hours of practicing it. And yeah. to be able to pass some of those nuggets on is just absolutely, you know. It's, yeah, no, it's gold. great. So, like and subscribe and book yourself a lesson. <laughs> the man's Cheers. awesome. All right. Thanks, man. Okay, good That's work. awesome.